Hello everyone, it is Lucy and today we're going to be doing a video that is one of my favourite kinds of videos to watch on YouTube and hopefully I'm thinking you might enjoy it too, but we're going to be doing a makeup declutter. So I'm going to be going through all of my makeup and a classic content creator move, uh, a quick <laughs> a quick disclaimer before we get into the contents of this video. If you've been on my channel or you've been kind of following me and this for a while, then you probably already know. But if you don't, as a internet right lady slash content creator TM, uh, I do sometimes get given free product or, you know, um, like store credit or something to use at my discretion. So I do get a lot of opportunities that I know like a regular consumer wouldn't to like try new products. And you know, as a result of those opportunities, you know, I, I get to try a lot of skincare, for example. We're not really covering skincare in today's video, but as a point, I get to try a lot of different skincare, which means that I can make resources like my skincare spreadsheet. You know, I, I can try a little bit more than if I was like, a regular gal, like it gives opportunities, but it is also like not normal, I feel. <laughs> and another thing that I want to mention, which I kind of referenced throughout the video as I'm chatting is I actually used to work in beauty retail. I used to work at a pretty popular beauty retailer here in Australia. And as a result of working at that beauty retail, I got a lot of free products, so gratis. And I also had a pretty generous employee discount. So um, a lot of the makeup in this video is also like holding over from there. So yeah, I just wanted to mention those couple of things. Um, you know, I watch a lot of these videos myself and I really, really enjoy them. And you know, there's always like this little disclaimer and I always kind of feel like it's cool. You don't need to, you know what I mean, explain it. But I also do think that it is part of a like responsibility, who am I, Spider-Man? <laughs> but you know, I do think I have a little bit of responsibility to just mention that my kind of consumerism isn't necessarily like your typical consumer, journey, relationship, you get my point. Yeah, but I, I wanted to make this video because I really enjoy watching these videos. It is going to be a long one, but I personally enjoy the really lengthy declutter videos. Like I want them to really be thorough and I like to listen to them while I like cook or clean and just do random things. And I know a lot of you kind of do that too. So hopefully if that's your kind of thing, uh, I hope you enjoy it. I mean, you know, <laughs> a video with a lot of talking and rambling from me, I know it's really unexpected. I'm sure a lot of you are really shocked, but hopefully you can um, move past it. <laughs> but before we jump into today's Simply Chonkers video, I want to thank today's sponsor, which is Anna. Louisa jewelry. Anna Louisa is a jewelry brand that I have absolutely grown to love because they make beautiful, timeless, high quality jewelry pieces at affordable prices. So I've actually been wearing Anna Louisa jewelry for a hot minute now. And when I say hot minute, I actually mean a few years. <laughs> and those first pieces that I got from them are still in my collection today and on regular rotation. The brand is also carbon neutral, which we very much like, and they also have speedy worldwide shipping. Also, if you are a silver jewelry preferring person, my cool tone bibbies out there, Anna Luisa has got a really increased range of silver jewelry. They definitely had a few pieces before, but as of recent, they have so many cute silver options. And of course they have plenty of gorgeous gold options as well. But if you are a silver preferring person, you know. <laughs> you know how hard it is to find like nice, high quality pieces that you wanna wear every day. Like you, you know. So I picked up a couple of new pieces that I've popped into my rotation and I have been wearing them a lot. Now, when I say that these pieces are gorgeous and high quality, I know because I have somewhat accidentally worn these pieces to sleep multiple days in a row and my skin is never irritated or stained and the pieces stay in perfect condition. They are the kind of pieces that I can just put on without thinking because they are just so versatile and cute. And obviously they're cute because if they weren't cute, I wouldn't wear them. <laughs> so take a little cheeky look at Ana Luisa's gorgeous range. You can click the link in the description box below to check their site out. And you can also use the code LUCYL10 to save when you shop your site. That is LUCYL10 and the link is in the description below. Thank you so much again to Ana Luisa for sponsoring today's video. And let's get into the decluttering. I don't really know what that hand motion is. Alrighty, let's open the first drawer. Bum, bum, bum. This is what I would describe as my complexion drawer. So you kind of have a mix of everything from foundations, tinted moisturizers, powders, contour, bronzer, blush, highlighter, all things base, I suppose. Yeah, complexion, complexion makeup before we move on to eyes and lips. So this like style of organization is maybe a little bit different to any of you who maybe watched my old makeup declutter on my old channel or my vlog channel. I kind of just like changed the way I had it organized at the end of last year. And I really actually don't mind it. Like it does sort of make sense to me, but I would like to have it be a little less 
cluttered, hence decluttering. And I also feel like kind of just talking it through will probably remind me of how old some of these products are and how much I use them. Because there are a couple products here that probably are getting a little funky in terms of formula. Um, I know a lot of people say you need to throw things out, you know, six months, a year, whatever. There's like strict dates. Um, and from my experience and like working in makeup retail and stuff like that, and just obviously I'm not a makeup artist. I only use this stuff on myself. I feel like if the texture feels fine and if it doesn't smell different or look different or feel different, like if nothing has changed about the formula, maybe except for mascaras, uh, but you're usually fine. But I have a lot of liquid and cream products here and I'm pretty sure some of them are kind of like on their last legs. So maybe we can give them like a fond farewell um, as they have served me very well. I've used them a lot, but now they're kind of just, I don't reach for them because of those reasons subconsciously. But yeah, I think we'll just get into it. What I'll probably do is pull out a category and then pop it up on my desk here. I think let's get to decluttering and kind of taking stock of what we've got. And then maybe we can review our organization situation. Alrighty, here we have my foundations. All of these foundations are actually quite different in my opinion. Um, I feel like that's like the classic makeup person. It's like, they're all different. They do different things. Um, but I do, I do think <laughs> they're all different and do different things. Um, so I'm just going to go through them kind of one by one. Cause there's not like a huge amount here. Uh, I'll do it kind of rapidly, but, um, I'm going to start over here because this one is, I think maybe one of my favorite foundations at the moment. It's this one, which is from Hera. Hera is kind of a Korean luxury. Brand. I would say it's equivalent to something like a Lancome or an Estee Lauder because it's quite a uh, long running like heritage Korean makeup brand. And some of you, if you are K-pop girlies, will be familiar with Hera because I believe Jenny from Blackpink was their ambassador for a while. She might even still be their ambassador. I'm not totally sure. And I hadn't tried much from Hera before, but I had heard good things. And I tried this foundation out and I don't think this was like the one heavily popularized. I think it was like the Hera Black foundation that's more like high coverage. Um, but I tried this and it is fantastic. Like I really can't rave about it enough. I don't know, I just don't hear anyone talking about it and maybe it's really popular like within Korea. Um, obviously it's like a Korean brand so I'm probably just not on the right forums, in the right space, but it is, but this is so incredibly slay. I would describe it as like kind of a sheer, almost like a Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk kind of formula. It's definitely a little bit up there in price point, but like compared to Giorgio Armani, it's more affordable. It has this coverage, but it makes my skin look so like dewy and healthy. The shade range from memory is not amazing, uh, which tends to be the case with a lot of cream brands, but the higher end brands in general, like Hera and Espoir, kind of like your Mac kind of type brands, if that makes sense tend to have a little bit more range. Um, I, I'm not, I don't think their range is good, but I think it's better than uh, other Korean brands, in my opinion. Like a lot of Korean brands will sometimes only have two or three shades of a complexion product, but Hera, um, Espoir, and there's one other one that is slipping my mind right now, but they tend to have maybe like five, seven, nine, sometimes like more than that um, shade. So not standing the shade selection, but the actual formula and the product itself is amazing. I only need like one pump to just get like the most amazing finish and it even works well, kind of layered. I can't say enough good things about this foundation, so I'm definitely keeping that. This foundation from Bobbi Brown is their Skin Longwear Weightless Foundation. Um, I believe I got this in PR like ages ago, back when I mainly did Instagram. Um, and I think it is probably uh, a little bit old now. I've definitely had it since before the Panini. I did try and use it semi recently and I remember the formula being like a little funky, like the shade being a little oxidized. Um, the actual formula of this foundation is really great. It's a really good looking kind of natural finish foundation with like medium to full buildable coverage. Um, it's really cool, but uh, I think, I do think I need to part with this cause I'm like not reaching for it because the last time I used it, it was just, I think a little past its prime, but really, really great product. Um, Bobbi Brown, still slay, like they're iconic for a reason. Also, I just wanna say uh, a lot of my foundations look a little bit less used than they are because they lie down. Um, this is probably on its last like 20, 30%. And I actually think this might be the second one I've 
used, maybe, maybe not. Um, I definitely remember using this a lot, but uh, it does it does need to go. This one from Lancome is their Ten Idol Ultra Wear. This is like the iconic Lancome foundation. Um, again, this one is similarly uh, aged to the Bobbi Brown one. It's maybe a little bit uh, past its prime. I did, however, use this recently on uh, my Halloween costume. I used it to cover my bald cap and for that it was really good. It's more of a matte finish, definitely more medium to full. This foundation is very good. Uh, it's probably not best suited to my skin type and how I like to do my makeup. Like I usually prefer a natural satin dewy finish and this definitely leans more on the like natural matte, matte kind of uh, side. I don't tend to go for these like super long lasting full coverage formulas um and i will show you the foundation that i go for when i do want those kind of effects it is very good though um it's been like a bestseller for a really long time and it is very iconic i do want to try some more stuff from lancome their mascaras are some of my favorite and have been for a very long time um i do love lancome i've worked with them previously they're a really great brand um but i do need to goodbye friend if you have ever watched some of my makeup declutter content or just makeup content in general, um, again, probably more so on my old vlog channel than so much on here, again, because of like Panini. <laughs> I feel like I haven't talked about makeup as much on this channel just because um, we haven't worn a lot of it in the last couple of years and like only now in getting back to wearing it um, more frequently am I like, okay, let's let's refresh. But this was pre-Panini, post-Panini. I'm obsessed with this formula. It's the Hourglass Vanish Stick Foundation. I feel like this one has such mixed reviews. Like some people are like, oh, it really doesn't work for me. Like it's really difficult. Um, it doesn't work on dry skin. I feel like I have like balanced to dehydrated skin and this looks so like satiny and dewy on me. I think it's amazing. I, I think you do have to skin prep with it, but I, I would suggest you skin prep with all foundations and bases, but, um, but it is just the most like flawless, easy to work with stick foundation. You just like put it where you need it. You can build it up from like a very light coverage to something way more full and like glam kind of vibes. I just, I think it's so versatile. I've even used it as like a concealer in a trick. Um, I've used it like underneath where I need more coverage, like on my cheeks, for example, and then done like a really sheer, like dewy foundation, like the hair one over the top and that works really well. It looks nice on its own. It wears really, really well. Like I've had naps in this and like woken up and my face just looks like the same, um, which I can't say about a lot of foundations. It just, I don't know. I think it's like an absolute superstar. I've been through like maybe two or three, I think this is maybe my third one of these sticks. They last for a really long time as well. Um, I would buy another one. Uh, it, it's so good. I hope they never discontinue this formula. I think it's amazing. So I'm definitely, definitely, definitely keeping this. Then we have this one from Peri Pera. This is their double long wear cover foundation. This is very good. Um, and again, another one where I'm like, I don't know if I heard about this. Like, I can't remember why I got this. Um, I do get credit to use on Yes Style from time to time. So I do tend to pick things up on there as they do have like a really wide variety of K-beauty cosmetics. So I can't remember if I like saw this on maybe like a Korean beauty YouTubers channel. I, I, I just don't know why I picked this up. Maybe I just picked this up because I tend to like Peri Pera's um, like lighter shade for me. Like the color they tend to go for, for their lighter shaded products tends to work with me. I believe Clio and Peri Pera are owned by the same company. I think that's the two that are connected. But I've worn like other Peri Pera like foundation products in the past and that lighter shade that they do just works quite nicely for me. So maybe that's why I went with this. Either way, this foundation is very good. It's quite a full coverage. I would almost say it's similar to the Bobbi Brown one I just talked about, but it has like the wear almost of the hourglass in that it looks like really full perfected but it wears like really naturally um and it doesn't tend to look cakey I, I don't really know how to describe it because i just feel like the formula of this foundation is so much better than what you would expect and like the price point because sometimes with cream foundations like they just the formula can be really really hit and miss but this one uh is very very good and from peri pera which is typically a like cheaper more affordable k beauty brand um again i I'm not confident that it's got a very good shade range. I would say they probably have like four or five tops. It's probably more close to three. So I'm, you know, I'm hesitant to be like, oh my gosh, like it's amazing. Like obviously in terms of 
that um, just generally the Korean beauty market just doesn't have that shade diversity. For example, the Hourglass Stick Foundation I just showed you has uh, a lot more of a diverse shade range. Um, so I'm more readily recommending that in terms of like it being something for everyone. Um, but the formula of this is really, really good. And I don't always like repurchase um, stuff because I just, I want to try new things. I want to test things to recommend, but um, it's very good. And I'm tempted to repurchase because it's just like, yeah, it's very good. Obviously because it's a bit more of a medium to full coverage kind of product, you do need to kind of like finesse it a little bit, um, but it's, it's very, very nice. Yeah, definitely keeping that. Uh, this is the B Glow Foundation Stick or Stick Foundation from Espoir. I thought it would have the, oh yeah, it does. <laughs> it does have the brand name on there, but you can't really see it because of the reflection. But it's from Espoir, which is another brand, uh, K-beauty brand that is a little more on the pricey side. I really, really like Espoir complexion products generally. Um, their cushion foundations are some of my all time favorites and they tend to have like, again, a slightly better range. I'm not saying it's good, <laughs> but it's better for K-Beauty. So I thought I would try one of their foundation sticks because I believe this was on special or had like a bargain deal on the Olive Young global website. I haven't used this too many times and I've sort of had varying experiences. Like sometimes I've used it and I've been like, oh my gosh, this looks so nice. And sometimes I've used it and I've been like, why does my makeup look whack? So I need to test it a little bit more. I'll keep it for now, but this is the kind of product where I'll give it a few more tries to just kind of test it. But if I'm not obsessed with it, I will probably declutter it. I, I don't know. I do tend to try and use up um, products, but I do have like other complexion products incoming on a semi-ish regular basis that I want to be able to try and test and recommend. So if I'm really not jiving with something and I have another product that I feel like does this better, like this is a stick foundation. I have my hourglass stick foundation that I love. So if this doesn't have like a different finish or like a different kind of vibe to it that can compare or I'll bring something new to the table, um, I'll probably move it on, but I, I do need to like, I need to test it a couple more times before I can decide. And then last but certainly not least is this from Numbuzin. This is their porcelain based, don't mind the birds, uh, skip tone up, oh my gosh, the birds. <laughs> I shot all my windows and everything in an attempt to try and keep the birds to be quiet. But I do have these um, big trees outside my apartment that birds like to sit in and make noises in, as you can hear. So um, if you ever hear, <laughs> gosh, it's so noisy. If you ever hear birds in my videos, it, it's something I really can't avoid. They are just there all the time. It probably is diminished by like the new mic setup I have, but yeah, the birds are, the birds are birding. This from Numbuzin is kind of like a old school BBCC cream. I think they maybe do this in like one other shade. So again, there's that. However, I have seen this on a few different people of different like skin tones and I feel like it looks good on like a variety of people. It's really just a, uh, it's really just like a tinted moisturizer in like a tube. But saying that, I feel like doesn't really capture how stunning this is. I don't know how to explain this, but when I put this on my skin, it really does not look like I'm wearing makeup. Like it is so lightweight and undetectable, but it also makes my skin look just so dewy and healthy. And it has like a little bit of coverage that like evens out my skin. It's just, I don't know, I've always like seen those like BB creams, CC creams, and I've just been like, this is just like a low coverage foundation or like a tinted moisturizer that's like heavy and sticky and all that. And this like, to me, when you kind of hear people describing a BB cream that it's like, you know, super low coverage and you know, a adaptable shade that makes your skin look just like really healthy and like not like there's a lot of stuff on it. I feel like this is like the true definition of that. It has got SPF 50. I do wear a separate dedicated sunscreen. I always recommend you do that with any foundation. Like, yeah, it's nice that they have sunscreen in them. It provides a little bit of, you know, a backup layer of protection, but to actually get the amount of protection advertised on foundations, you would need to put so much on <laughs> um, compared to sunscreen. So always sunscreen and then, you know, these kinds of products. This is amazing. Um, and I really want to try their other one as well. That's like a kind of purpley, like glowy kind of one. Um, I'd be interested to see if anyone else has tried it who maybe has a different skin tone to me. Cause like, again, I, I always am cautious about recommending, you know, oh, it's really great for me, but I don't know how, you know, if it would have a white cast on other people. This is the kind of thing, if I want to look a little bit more put together, um, like I want to wear a little bit of makeup, but I just want it to be like super low key. It's like perfect for that, like no makeup, makeup vibe. 
It's very, very cool. So definitely keeping that. So these are the buddies that are staying around. And then these guys are the ones that are departing. I feel like that's not really a, uh, a major <laughs> declutter, maybe not super satisfying, but um, I, I do use like these four, especially on a pretty regular rotation. And this one I'm testing and I, I really like these four a lot. So I, I think that's, that's pretty decent. Uh, we are about to go through cushions. I was about to say that I really like complexion makeup the most, but in truth, I just like makeup overall and I really like to play and switch and swap. I don't really do the same thing every single day. Um, I definitely do my makeup differently depending on what I'm doing, which I suppose a lot of people do, but then I don't know. Some people, when I like talk to them, they just have like their one foundation they really like. Um, whereas I'm like, well, this is like my kind of like going out, like glowy glam foundation. And this is my, like, I need my foundation to stay on forever foundation. And this is my like low key, like want to look cute at the farmer's market foundation. And I realized that's like, you know, <laughs> okay. May maybe not everyone is like this, but anyway, let me know what you're kind of like. Cause I feel like it's good to have like your trusty favorites, but I really like to play as well. I feel like that's like the fun of, uh, makeup. So yeah, these guys passing on into the void, these will be returned to the draw. Okie dokie, um, we have some cushion foundations here. I love cushion foundations. I find they are so easy to use. The formulas tend to be more on that like low to medium coverage side. Um, I tend to go for the dewy kind of ones and I always like it because I don't like you know, touching up a bunch uh, out of the house. But the fact that they are usually like a mirror and like a little mini foundation, even if I'm not wearing one of those particular foundations on the day, I will put one of them in my bag because they are so good for touch ups and just like all that. I love, love, love cushion foundations. And I remember when everyone was like, they're a fad, they'll go away. I'm so glad they haven't. I mean, look, <laughs> maybe like the Western kind of phase of cushion foundations was a bit of a phase, but um, obviously still incredibly popular in Korea. First off, this Espoir one, I'm just like holding it a bit awkwardly because it is mirrored, um, but it is broken, unfortunately, which is so, so sad because this formula is probably one of my favorite out of the bunch. Um, I love Espoir cushions. I tried another one, which was like in a red case. I can't remember exactly what it was called, but I bought it on my trip like to Korea in like 2018, 19, I think. Um, and it was so, so amazing. So I wanted to try some more from Espoir's foundation range. And this one is also incredible. It's the B Glow Cushion, I think. It's really, really great. I just unfortunately dropped the compact and it broke. And then I used nail glue to like reattach it um, and then it broke again. And unfortunately I have like a refill for this, but I don't have like another case. Um, I think I'll see if I can put it in like another case, but otherwise I mainly just use this one at home. I don't take it out with me and I'll like just apply my foundation with this, like even though it's broken, which is so sad, <laughs> but it's really, really good. The formula is incredible. So uh, I'm going to hold on to this because I really like it. Even though it's broken, um, I want to finish it up. Next up, we have two from Clio. These are two of their Kill Cover cushions. We have the Cover Foundwear cushion and the Cover Glow Fitting cushion. So similar like packaging, um, but just different formulas. Uh, I actually really like both of these. This one is more of like the typical cushion foundation formula that I use. It's quite glowy. Um, it's like a light to medium coverage. Uh, it just it, it's very easy, um, works quite well, but I've, I've been surprised at how much I like this one. It's definitely full of coverage um, and a little bit more finicky, kind of like the Espoir stick foundation that I mentioned before and that sometimes I'm like, I don't know, it's a bit depends on the day. It's a bit fickle. <laughs> sometimes I feel like this looks really good and other times I'm just like, why does this look horrendous? Um, so it's not as easy going as this one, um, but when it looks good, it looks really, really good. So yeah, these are my first, I think, Clio foundation or cushions that I've tried because I think they expanded the range. I think it used to be a little bit darker. I tried them and swatched some of the foundations in person again, back when I was in Korea in like 2018 and they just seemed a little bit too dark. Um, and even the shop assistants were like, yeah, probs not, hey, but I think these um, shades are maybe a little bit lighter. I I'm not sure. 
Or maybe I've gotten a little bit more tan, but I seriously doubt that. But yeah, I'm gonna hold on to both of these. I don't think I have refills for either of these. I think these ones are just like a one and done. Um, you can obviously refill them if you want to. And if I do really like a cushion, I do get a refill. Sometimes cushions come with refills, sometimes they don't. Um, so I will continue using these up because I've already used them for quite a while. Uh, they're, they're pretty good. They're not standouts to me, like they're not amazing, but um, they're solid and the price point is quite nice. This little guy here is the Laneige Glow Cushion. I think that's what it's called. Um, oh, got it back to front. Um, I love the packaging for this. I love the like kind of rounded square. It's very pleasing to me. Um, this is just my kind of vibe for packaging, like the minimal pastel. I'm very into it. I got this one quite a while ago and I used it primarily a while ago and I've only just sort of been like dipping into it now. It's pretty much nearly finished. I quite like this. I know a lot of people really, really like the green, like the mint version of this, which is like the matte one, whereas this is like the radiance, glowy, dewy one. I think these were advertised as being a mask proof. This definitely isn't, in my opinion. It's definitely on like the glowier side, whereas like the matte one, I feel like definitely was like transfer proof. I, I really like this formula. It's very flattering. Um, I, I really feel like I used the bulk of it like a while ago and I've only just sort of been like trying to finish it as of recent so I can't I've been more recently using the clear cushions than the s-bar cushion like this one I have had for like quite a while um but I am nearly done with it and uh once I empty it I don't think I'll repurchase it because I don't really think it's necessarily outstanding but I do think it's very nice and again like the packaging is very good I was tempted to get the refill of the matte one to try it because I know everyone liked the matte one and that was like the best seller but I do definitely consider this one to be like safe and reliable um compared to some other formulas so yeah very, very nice. And I guess I did not make that clear. I'm going to keep it and finish it up and then, you know, probably bid it a fond farewell. This cushion foundation from Innisfree, uh, I think has a very pretty glowy formula. It's the Skin Fit Glow Cushion in the shade 13C. It's a very nice, glowy, lightweight formula, but uh, compared to some of the other ones, and I think I retried this recently and was like, oh, Hmm, because essentially this one is a very like glowy, dewy formula that isn't necessarily lightweight, but also doesn't really build and provide like additional coverage. Like it's kind of like a one and done. And then if you try and layer it, I feel like it, it doesn't make it worse, but it certainly doesn't make it better. Um, and it's almost like got a pinky orangey tone. I have had this for a while, so there is potential that it has oxidized. So I'm not like putting that entirely down to the shade because uh, I at one point did use this, but I've always sort of had like on and off issues with this one. Um, there was a time I feel like where I really, really enjoyed it, but maybe it's just a case that formulas have progressed and gotten better because I don't really reach for this one much at all. Um, and yeah, as I said, I reached for this recently and I was like, Ugh, this is, this is not great. Um, but hard to tell if it's just because I've had it for a while or if it's because of the actual formula, if that makes sense. Um, I do really like Innisfree makeup and complexion products. Um, but this one is going to go. I, I do not need to use it and test it anymore. I don't even know if they still sell this exact cushion foundation variation. It, it's, yeah, it's goodbye. <laughs> And then here we have this Romand cushion. This is like the new updated version of the Romand cushion. I was obsessed with the original Romand cushion. I just thought it was like so incredible. I like raved about it. Um, so I was very, very excited to try the new one. I don't know if I like it more than the original. Um, I've used it a couple times and it's sort of been, again, like a depending on the day kind of thing. Um, it seems to be like a little bit more full coverage and a little bit more like matte or um, I don't know, the formula is not as like kind of fresh feeling. It definitely just feels like finicky to work with. I felt like the original Roman foundation while being like a medium to buildable kind of coverage um, was very easy to make look good. Whereas I feel like I have to spend a little bit more time on this one and I feel like it can look a little bit cakey maybe. But again, I haven't really tested this a lot. I don't know if anyone else has tried like the old cushion formula and then the new cushion formula. And I don't even know if they're gonna keep the old one around. Um, so we'll see, but I will hold on to this for now because it's still pretty new to me. Look, I did say I didn't think this section was going to be super satisfying, um, but uh, <laughs> I will say a lot of these are like close to being used up. Like they're at least more than halfway 
finished so I think this will reduce again quite quickly maybe to make ways for some new ones for me to test I can't promise I won't do that but yeah I uh, I'm definitely a cushion foundation gal I really enjoy them uh, formulas often tend to speak to me and I'm pretty lucky that uh, they tend to often have a shade that suits me as well okie dokie out of tricky my tea is hot and we are now looking at my kind of concealers, correctors, all that jazz. I have a couple that are favorites, namely these two pots here. This is the Becca Corrector, which I think is now sold by Smashbox. I was really sad because I was like RIP to like the best under eye brightening formula for my dark under eye girlies. But thankfully um, it is still being made by Smashbox. So I'm actually nearly done with this one. So I'll probably pick up another one. Um, this is just a mainstay for me. I've tried other things, um, which I'll talk about in a moment, but this is still my fave. And then this one here from NARS is their Soft Matte Complete Concealer. I've got mine in the shade Chantilly, which is a really nice neutral, fair shade. I wish Chantilly was like a foundation shade that NARS did because unfortunately, the really fair NARS undertones, either the really pink ones or the really yellow ones, just do not work for me. I need something more like Chantilly. But this concealer is so long wearing, perfect shade, beautiful creamy consistency, um, just any blemishes, just dabbing this on, it just, they just disappear like magic. It's so great. Um, I've had the same one for ages. I still haven't run out yet. Um, you'll need like a tiny little bit. It's amazing. I really, 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 really recommend this. Alrighty, we have some concealers here and I'll be honest in that I think I only really use like two of these. Um, so hopefully we can clear out a couple because I don't, I don't like having things that I don't use. Um, and when I go to use them and being disappointed and I'm like, why, why did I not learn from my last uh, mistake? But I was, you know, I was waiting to do a little clear out for you. So this one from Fenty Beauty is their Bright Fix Eye Brightener. I was wanting to try something else other than the Becca Corrector. I was trying to see maybe, maybe there's something else amazing out there. And I saw some like mixed reviews on this, but some people saying it was really amazing. I've tried it. I think it's nice, but definitely not a replacement for my Becca Corrector. It's a little bit more on the matte side. Um, it's a little almost like kind of a corrector concealer combo, whereas the Becca one just feels like a really creamy corrector. Um, it's good. I will continue using it, but I don't like it as much as the Becca one. Um, but it, it's, it's, uh, it's fine. <laughs> It's okay. It doesn't wow me. There was recently an offer on Maybelline at my local chemist. So I picked this one up again because I remembered really, really liking it quite a few years ago in uni. I think they maybe extended the shade range or I'm misremembering, um, but it's, it's quite nice. The little, you know, spongy thing on the top is a little kind of gross. Um, I probably will take it off, but also I mainly just dab it onto my hand and then onto my face. Um, it, it's pretty good. It's pretty solid. It's been fun to uh, get reacquainted with uh, a classic and see that the formula still is very good and holds up. This concealer from Colourpop I've had for ages, um, mainly because it's very fair and I find that a lot of concealers, um, especially if I'm using them under my eyes or, you know, kind of like that almost brightening effect. But this formula from Colourpop, the like pretty fresh formula, is very much kind of like what I talked about before with that Innisfree cushion that it's very like dewy but also like you can't really get a lot of coverage out of it like it's really hard to build this um and it doesn't yeah layer nicely at all um and it's just so sheer that it's almost like not really a concealer uh, I've also had this for like years and years now um it's always weird you know what I mean like I feel like you know makeup goes from being like I literally just got this last week to like I have had that for multiple years like two plus years okay uh this needs to go um <laughs> it's it's definitely old I don't reach for it I get annoyed every time I use it it's not horrendous. I don't even know if they still sell this. Um, so I don't even know if it's worth giving like an extended review, but uh, it's, it's time for this to depart. Also from Peri Pera, I just talked about how much I love the foundation. So I thought I would also really like the concealer. Unfortunately to me, this is a bit of a flop. Um, it kind of oxidizes and dries really yellowy on me. Um, so it just looks really noticeably like the wrong color under my eyes. And so it defeats like the purpose cause it doesn't like blend in. Um, and I feel like I kind of have to mix this with other things for it to work and just like, it's not, it's not the mood. <laughs> so I will be passing this on. Similar situation with me and this tip concealer from the same. Uh, I know this is really popular, K-Beauty Classic. It's very affordable, so I would recommend it on that end. 
but um, as of more recent times where I've used this, I have noticed similar to the Peri Peri one that it kind of dries and oxidizes a color that is a little bit more saturated and pigmented and dark on my skin tone um, and thus kind of like screwing up my makeup look. Uh, and I actually think one time there was a time where Max, uh, my boyfriend noticed it and he doesn't typically notice, but he fully was like looking at me being like, why are your under eyes like a different color? And I was like, yeah, okay, no. So I've been holding onto this because I was like, but I've loved it before, but um, I, I can find something better. <laughs> I don't have to suffer. <laughs> and here we have the I'm Unny concealer. I wouldn't describe this as my perfect concealer. I don't think it's particularly outstanding. However, it is the right shade, <laughs> unlike those other ones I just talked about. Um, and it was pretty affordable. It works pretty well. I, I don't really go full like heavy coverage um, and I will just sometimes just layer up my foundation. So I don't use concealer a bunch. Uh, and this, this one fits the bill. I don't think I would necessarily repurchase it. Um, I'm keen to see if I can find something I like more, but it, it's pretty good. Like I, I reach for it. It's uh, the reliable one that I currently have. <laughs> there we go. Perhaps a little bit more satisfying getting rid of three concealers. I know that will make that section look a lot nicer and not give me like the brain pain of looking at things that I just find very difficult and unpleasant to use. Um, happy to declutter those three and uh, keep these ones. So these you probably did not see in the desk before, but these are actually all of my primers. Um, and I feel like I might be getting rid of maybe like half of these, maybe more. Primers to me are not a necessary step. I know some people like can't do their makeup without their primer. I am not one of those people. So I'm gonna start with this one. I feel like this one had a moment of real popularity, um, almost like viralness. And I love this primer. And when I looked and pulled them out of the drawer, I was like, well, I'm definitely not getting rid of that. But then I was like, wait a minute, isn't this pretty much finished? And it's like empty. Um, so I don't know why I thought <laughs> it wasn't, um, that, that's got like maybe one use in it, um, but it is also getting pretty old. So I think we can safely include this in the declutter pile. I love this primer, um, and of any primers I've tried in terms of how they feel on my skin and how it works with my skin, this one is definitely one of the ones I really enjoy. I feel like some of these really, really super silicone -y, kind of like your spackly almost primers. My skin just doesn't really like them, but this one gets along with my skin really nicely. Um, bit of a treat, bit of a kind of bougie vibe, but I do really like Tatcha skincare generally. And this product from Tatcha I think is so, so beautiful. It's really great, but it is also empty so it can move on. This is one of your more typical kind of um, blurring, smoothing primers from Too Cool For School. Um, I've used this a couple times and I really, really like it, especially when I'm doing like a more full coverage glam look. And again, I feel like my skin does get along with this. I don't feel like it's so heavy and like suffocating. <laughs> um, I really enjoy it. I've only used it a couple of times. It's pretty new to me, but um, pretty good so far. Ah, uh, future due. This bottle, this packaging, is so stunning, it's so pretty. But there is something about Future Dew that just doesn't work for me. I think it's a combination of the scent, it has this kind of like herbally perfume scent that I, I don't really like. Um, and also the texture is, you know, as it says, it's an oil serum hybrid. I would say it's more oily, um, it's quite thick, it's quite heavy. I think that would be very nice if you um, are on the drier side and you do struggle with that dehydration and flakiness and you really want your makeup to be glowy. But I do feel like I have skincare that does this for me. I, I just, I really, I don't know. There's something about it that I don't love. I can absolutely see who this would be fantastic for. I can see why so many people love it. Um, I am so sad because I wish this formula was slightly different because I'm obsessed with like everything else about it. Glossier, you know, is kind of that brand. Uh, maybe it's a little basic of me, but I just think their packaging and their like design is just so pretty. And that is one of the things I do enjoy about makeup and which we will talk about as we get into uh, lower layers. And I've used this quite a bit, um, but I haven't managed to get like through it significantly. And I just, the heaviness and the stickiness for me um, isn't in that like pleasing cushiony way where it kind of like sinks into your skin and like plumps it up. I feel like it just sits on top of my skin and is like a little bit uh, on the greasy side. I know I feel like that's kind of mean maybe, but um, it's, it's not for me, it just doesn't, it doesn't work for me. And I feel like it should work for me because I'm on that more like balanced, dehydrated, potentially dry side, but I have other things I would rather use than this. This just doesn't 
I don't, I don't love the, the way it works. Then we have this from MAC. This is the Strobe Cream in Silver Light. I think this one is definitely a little old, potentially. Like, potentially I shouldn't hang on to it, but um, let me just do a, let me just do a sniff check. Okay, it smells fine. So compared to the original Strobe Cream, which is like the peachy colored one, this is like the silvery glowy one. Uh, it's not something I reach for all the time, but if I do want that like, otherworldly glowy android skin look. This is like the texture I prefer as compared to something like Future Dew. It just sinks into the skin better. It's more like a hydrating moisturizer. It's not so like greasy. Also just generally like the pearl kind of colors, like the silvery sheen of this I prefer than like the peachiness of Future Dew. It's really, really pretty. It's like such a old school kind of classic, but I stand Max Strobe Cream. I think it's fabulous, so I'll keep that. And then if you wanted kind of a more affordable alternative to Max Strobe Cream, this again is one which I feel like is sort of like Strobe Cream. It's kind of like Future Dew. It's kind of like the Too Cool for School one. It's like a blend of different primers because I feel like this one has that smoothing spackliness um, that you would expect from a smoothing primer, but it also has like the glowiness of the Future Dew and MAC one, but I wouldn't say it's like as hydrating. It's more of a primary primer in the more traditional way. This is from the Peach C. This is their Peach Glow Makeup Base. It has a kind of green apple, like fresh scent and the glowiness to it is quite subtle. It's not particularly like a pigmented, like peachy or golden or silvery kind of glow. It's just kind of like a soft luminescence. To me, this isn't a standout, but again, I'm not really like a primer girl. So there, there aren't really many primers that like do things for me that I wouldn't rather just do with like other base products. Um, but I do quite like it and I think it's a really nice affordable option. Uh, and it's good. I, I should use more primers, but uh, with my current storage, they kind of get hidden a bit. So maybe I'll see if I can rejig that a little bit before the end of this video. So there are the primers. We are keeping these ones and unfortunately decluttering the prettiest ones. <laughs> I mean, look, this one is actually amazing. It's just empty. But if this was like my primer kind of base situation, I would be so happy, like aesthetically. It's just so me. When it comes down to it, as much as I oh, like, this just looks so cute. But, but this is what I actually prefer to use. Um, I feel like I'm lumping the touch room. You didn't do anything wrong, sweetie. You're doing amazing. You, however, <laughs> you are not the chosen one. You are not my son. Goodbye. <laughs> Okie dokie out of trekkies, we have four powders here and I am here to tell you that we are getting rid of none of them. Uh, I'll do a quick run through just to let you know why um, and then we'll just very quickly move on. So here I have the classic Laura Mercier loose translucent powder. I do believe that this was maybe gratis at uh, my old workplace. I, I definitely had more than one and I think I gave them away to a friend because this does last you such a long time. I'm not like a super heavy powderer. Again, I like the dewy look, so I really only like powder a little bit. Um, so powders do last me a long time. But this one, if I do need like a heavy duty, like fine translucent setting powder, like it's just, very good, especially for filming. If I want to look matte or if I need something really long wearing, then this is like the one. Then another loose powder that I don't use as often, but I very much enjoy. This is the Tatcha Silk Powder or the Silk Powder. I think I actually got gifted this in PR maybe. I think that's what happened. Um, Cause I don't know if I knew about it at the time, like until I got given it or I haven't like tried it before. Regardless, um, I don't think a lot of people talk about this, but it's really, really beautiful. It's essentially a setting powder with this almost like fine, like sheen to it. It's a little heavier than the Laura Mercier one. Like it just kind of, it's not really cakey per se, but you do just have to be a little bit more delicate with it than the Laura Mercier one. You can't just go like super heavy handed with it in my opinion, um, because it does have that kind of slight, like sheer, glowy pigment, but this lay it on top of any, you know, glowy or like medium to full coverage, like dewy foundation just looks so stunning because it doesn't make it completely matte, but it does give this like really perfected look. It's so pretty. I do need to use this more to be honest, because it's just really, really gorgeous. Um, you just have to be a little bit mindful when you're using it. It's not like as easy to use as some, um, but it's so, so pretty. So I'm keeping that around. And this from Hourglass is my go-to. This is the Ambient Light Powder in Ethereal Light. And as you can see, it's kind of like an off, 
white sort of color um, and I use this as my setting powder most regularly um, and I just take this across my kind of like center of my face I don't really set my whole face with it it does a really great job at setting your makeup down like taking away that excess shine but it doesn't make it matte like the Laura Mercier one does or the one I'm about to show you does it's not really mattifying um, it's a very gentle set but it also keeps everything looking really glowy and soft kind of like I think I've described this I remember I used to sell this in stores and I think I would describe it as like a Cate Blanchett Lord of the Rings kind of vibe obviously not with that full glowy extent but just very like soft diffused basically undetectable it's like so incredible there's some other shades of this as well but it is very very sheer I just love this um would repurchase it kind of goes into my holy grail thing this and like the hourglass uh, stick foundation I just think they're like incredible products um that are just just so 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 good I really like hourglasses complexion products in general um you'll see a few more of them in this video and I just it's so good. And this bad boy from Can Make, I don't know what it's called exactly, but it's just like a little compact. Um, mine is pretty old. I want to say it's like 2019, something like that. It's getting. <laughs> and I would get rid of it and I probably should declutter this because it's it's pretty much done, but I kind of just want to finish it up. You know, I want to just finish it up um, because I do use this a lot uh, and it's still fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Powder products in general tend not to have those kinds of issues that people talk about when they're talking about makeup going bad and stuff. Um, typically powder products, uh, they're dry. So there's not really a lot of room for bacteria to grow. Just, just generally, fun fact. So when I worked in beauty retail, we did have to be really careful about, you know, concealer testers, mascara testers, foundations, um, cream blushes, all of that kind of stuff. But powders um, were usually pretty safe and we didn't seem to have any issues with because you can just spray them with alcohol and it keeps them nice and sanitized and clean. Obviously we were still replacing them um, from time to time and obviously because you want them to look nice on the display, but just in general, in terms of safety, uh, powder is usually pretty, pretty good. Anyway, all to say, uh, I'm keeping all four of these. Um, <laughs> I feel like they serve different purposes, but I will say mainly it's like these three that I'm using and then this one I actually just use for filming because it's like the most mattifying out of all of them. Like you dab it and it's like all shine is completely gone. It's like completely mattifying. And that is really, really useful for filming because um, you just, the shine shows up more <laughs> on camera. As I'm sure some of you have seen it on my videos where I just look like the world's dewiest, sweatiest little rat woman. So I'm keeping, keeping these powders. Before I jump into contouring and bronzers uh, completely, I just want to briefly mention this ColourPop freckle pen. I'm keeping it. It's really great. If you want to do freckles, I recommend this. It's very, very easy to use and nice. Uh, like this video is never going to be as like dramatic and satisfying as like a woman with like a hundred contour products. Uh, anyway, starting off with this one, which is the Fenty Beauty Contour Stick in the shade Amber. This was one of the most recommended like cooler tone contour, like cream contour sticks on the market at the time when I bought it, which is maybe like a year plus, maybe two years ago. I feel like I bought a lot of this makeup recently, but as I'm reflecting, that is not the case. If anyone has any recommendations for like cooler toned cream contour products, um, I would really appreciate it because I do think this one's good. It can be a little bit finicky. You do have to blend it out pretty quickly. Like it's a quite matte uh, finish as it says matte. Matte sticks? Matte sticks? The formula is more matte. And I know they have this in like a compact, more like creamy formula that people have said is better or some people prefer. But I feel like because it's the same color and this does work well enough for me, I will just continue using this. Pretty happy to finish it up if I can. Um, a lot of product there. But uh, also if there is something that I find better and I move on, I'd be cool with that too. Um, but as for now, it's pretty good. But yeah, open open to love, open to work on LinkedIn. <laughs> this is the, oh my gosh, the birds. The Romand Contour. This is the powder contour I've been using most recently. I don't know exactly what it's called, but I think it's like the only powder contour they have. It's quite a neutral, cool toned kind of color. And I like that the formula isn't super duper pigmented. So it's uh, pretty easy to work with. I have a couple of times, you know, put a little bit too much on and it looks a little bit funny, but that is more down to my skill than the product per se. A great kind of more affordable option. I do think they have this in another shade as well, if I'm correct. This is like the cooler toned one, um, but I do really enjoy this one. And then the other two contour products I have here are the Too Cool For School Art Class by Rodan. 
um, contour ones. So I, I don't actually need both, but I think mentally in the back of my mind, I was like, I'm gonna do this video. So I didn't just like immediately replace it. But essentially this is the warm toned, like original one. As you can see, kind of got more of those like terracotta -y kind of warm colors. And then that is the more cool toned one, which I actually have not started using yet. Um, so I did use this one for quite a while, but it's just a bit like ready orangey, like at times it just didn't look quite right. Um, and then when they came out with this one, uh, and then they also put in like this like limited edition, like baby pink packaging. I am gonna declutter this one and uh, bring this one into the family. I'm excited to start using this one. It looks quite similar to the Ramond one. The Ramond one seems a little more ashy, maybe like a touch more pink, whereas this one seems a little lighter, maybe a little bit more olivey. Um, it might be hard to pick up on camera, but that is how it appears to me. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes. But yeah, I'll just keep these guys. So keeping these three and saying adieu to this one. And that actually, aesthetically, is quite a cute little threesome, little triply kind of gang there. <laughs> I may have just had a little spot of lunch, uh, but we have a lot of blushes here. Um, <laughs> I love blush. Um, I have fallen deeper and deeper in love with blush in recent times. Uh, thus you can see kind of the variety we have here. I might go like section by section just for ease of eye pain. But so many of these I, you know, really, really enjoy. But there are a couple I see already which I feel like I can pass on. So I'm going to start with cream blushes and just move these powder ones out of the way. Alrighty, we have here all of my kind of cream blushes. Um, it's quite a few. Uh, and to be honest, I do have a couple that I got recently um, with some Yes Style credit that I had. Uh, I just really, really like cream blushes, but I did also know I was going to do this video and I knew there were a couple which were going to uh, say a peaceful goodbye. First up, I have this gorgeous compact from Bobby Brown. Um, it is from their Bobby Brown Ula Johnson collaboration. This actually, I don't know when this is exactly from. I want to say it's from 2018. So we're looking at about four years now. So it's quite old, um, but I will open this up. And essentially in here, they had a like face oil um, and I've got a highlighter and a blush. I really like the blush and I use the blush a lot, but the other two components, not as much. Um, it is quite aged. It is kind of at that point where, you know, I, I love it, so I'm not getting rid of it, but I'm also not reaching for it because it is a little bit old. It's a little bit, it's a little bit gross. Um, and I do think it's kind of gotten to a point where I probably do need to say goodbye to it. Um, I did get quite a lot of use out of this color. It doesn't look like it, but I did use it actually like so much. Um, but these Bobbi Brown colors, I have another one here, but they, you only need like the tiniest bit and they last the longest time. Uh, they're pot cheek cream cheek formula. I don't know exactly what it's called. I'll be able to see on the other compact, but it's phenomenal. But alas, I do need to part with this. It's the kind of thing that if you used all three elements, it would be great to take traveling. But can I just say any type of compact that has like a space for a brush in it, I just, I really don't like. <laughs> uh, this is technically for a face oil, but you know what I mean? Like that extra space in the compact, it just makes it bulkier. I eventually take it out because it's meant to be, you know, removed and just, uh, yeah. It, that's one element I didn't like about this, but the actual color and formula of that cream blush in particular was fantastic. The highlighter was okay, but nothing, nothing special, but yeah, good boy. Next up, I have this from Stylander. It is their blush cushion. I love it. I use it all the time. It's a little bit like it leans a little fluoro peachy sometimes in application, but it's very easy to use. It's very pretty. I would buy this in more colors, but this is really like the only color I want. And sometimes that's good. I'm definitely keeping this. It's very easy to use, um, very quick uh, and a very pretty formula. Then from a pew, we have this like juicy pung blush. Um, it's kind of this like mauvey, dusty nude kind of color. Um, I've only used it a couple of times, but I've really liked how I've used it when I have used it. It's just like cream to powder formula, um, but it is pretty. Jury's still out on whether or not this is going to be like a fave of mine, um, but I do like it. And I like it a bit more than the liquid Juicy Pung formula, which I know everyone really likes that. Um, but I found those like quite difficult to use and the kind of different shades were quite inconsistent. Um, I like this a lot more. It's more of like a moussey kind of texture. So I'm going to hang on to that. 
This is the other Bobbi Brown cream blush that I was talking about. They're called the Pot Rouge formula they had on the back. Um, this I also got, I think in like 2017, 2018, a really, really long time ago. I've used it so much. Do not judge me. <laughs> it is well used and loved, but it's looking a little like crusty, dusty. I'm seeing some discoloration in there. I think it is time to finally say goodbye to this one. I swear I use this like so much and it really doesn't look that way, which I find a little bit painful. And like brief side tangent, but there was like that period, I feel like in beauty YouTube and like reviewing where people talk about like the amount of product and like whether or not it was worth it. And I do understand what they mean from like a price perspective, like, oh, you know, there's not as much eyeshadow in this as like this other palette. But sometimes I'm like, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. I would rather have less and use it up than, you know, this like huge amount that I will simply just never get through. I don't even think they make this shade anymore. Um, so it's not really one that I would talk about on Instagram or on camera really, because it was like a unique shade to like this specific collab. It's a very beautiful product. And if I do, you know, have a look at a Bobbi Brown gondola and see some other shades in this formula because it is like their classic formula. I would check them out because it lasts really well. It wears really beautifully. It's such a pretty like dewy formula. So yeah, but it, it, it needs to be a bit of dew. <laughs> Again, please hold your judgment. Um, but <laughs> this broken <laughs> compact from Lime Crime, I'm just going to close it. I think you've seen what you need to see. Um, this is one of their pixel software soft matte blushes. I can't, I think software. Yeah. Cause it's a pun like software haha, <laughs> uh, blushes. I absolutely love this. It was in the shade pixel. Yes. Um, this really soft baby cool tone pink. I'm obsessed with this. Um, I broke this, I think actually in my last like filmed makeup declutter that I did, I talked about this and how it was broken, but like it was fine. I have continued to use it. It has now gotten to the point where I'm like, okay, <laughs> I, it, it's now like really broken and it's getting like discolored on the edges and it's really like roughed up. So um, I do think I need to say goodbye to this one. Very well worn, very well used. Um, I really love it, uh, but I need to say goodbye. I would potentially re... Oh, I feel like I say I would repurchase. I guess if I was not uh, an internet like lady who tried things, I would repurchase this because I think it's absolutely beautiful. Um, and maybe in the future I would, um, if it's still available. I would recommend this, I guess is what I'm saying, but I will probably try some new things, but I really, really like this. And you know, if someone gave one to me, I would be very happy. <laughs> so I'm gonna declutter this one. Then another product that looks a little worse for wear and probably could do with a bit of TLC before I put it away. But this is the Gel Crush um, cream blush from Flower Beauty. And it's so funny. I use this on like my cheeks and my lips and I actually used it on my eyes once um, as like a kind of baby pink eye gloss. And it was so pretty. But the time that I then put it on my eyes was about the time when I had uh, my allergy incident, which some of you who may watch this channel may have seen, may know about. So for a while there, I was like, maybe it's this that I'm allergic to. Um, it's definitely not, <laughs> but I kind of like was using it a lot and then I stopped using it because I was like suspicious. And then, you know, I kind of broke the habit of using it and I started using other things instead. But, but this is such a pretty glossy cream blush. Some of the other ones are a little bit more pigmented, a little bit just like a liquid blush, but this one is like really low pigment, really layerable with like a really glossy, glassy shine. I don't know what the other shades are like, but this is Strawberry Crush, I think. Um, and it's very pretty. So shout out to Drew Barrymore because this one is very slay and I will hold on to it. Then another very <laughs> well-worn, slightly battered tube. Um, this is Cloud Paint from Glossier in the shade Puff. Uh, I I'm getting through it. It's kind of nearly at the end of its lifespan. So I will hold on to this because I do really like it um, and I'm nearly done with it. And I really want the like berry shade actually of this because I really, really like this formula. You only need like a little bit and it's like all watercolory and pretty. If you haven't tried cloud paint, I would recommend it. I think it's very, very nice. Um, yeah, really like this formula. And then we have this from 3CE. This is currently my favorite cream liquid blush. This is the sheer liquid blusher in the shade Side Piece. The undertone in this of like, almost like, I don't know, like a juicy strawberry, like stone fruit. It gives like ripe fruit, but it looks really bright while also still having this kind of muted aspect to it. It's just such a gorgeous color. I feel like it suits me really well. I wear this all the time. It's so easy to use. It looks so like, healthy and dewy on the skin while also blending in well, but not disturbing the other makeup on your face. If you haven't tried these 3CD blushes and you're looking for a cream liquid blush, 
I highly recommend these. I think this is like the shade for me. I had a look at the other shades and I wasn't really as like in love with them as I love this one, but I really, really love this one. It's so stunning. So definitely, definitely, definitely keeping that. All right, we've got like five versus three, which I actually don't think is half bad. Uh, I love the aesthetic of the ones that we're <laughs> keeping all these like really pretty pink tones. Um, and these ones were also really good products, but just unfortunately have to have to pass on to the next life. Um, but yeah, pretty much all of these cream liquid blushes that I have at the moment, um, all the formulas are really, really solid, which is nice. You know what I mean? Like I don't really have any flops. I don't really have any duds. They're all uh, really solid. Um, but yes, that's the, that's the initial blush cull. <laughs> Alrighty, it's powder time. Uh, sure do be having many powders here. I also can't be confident that I'm gonna get rid of many, if any, of these, which I think is the wrong uh, take, perhaps, for this type of series, but I was kind of just looking at them before I pressed record and was like, hmm, I like pretty much all of these. Oh boy. <laughs> anyway, let's uh, dive in and see what we can get into. And I'm gonna start with these two because I know I'm not getting rid of these. These are from Romand. That's both of their Better Than Cheeks. I think that's what they're called. Um, this is the Strawberry Milk one and this is the Blueberry Chip, I think. I'm not totally sure, but this is the one that comes in the Yes Style Advent Calendar this year. They both have this really amazing formula, which when you apply it onto the cheek, it like, blurs it it's almost like a little creamy really dusty um but the way it applies on the cheek makes your cheek just look like so smooth and diffused um almost like a silicony kind of effect it's very very cool um both of these colors are really pretty this is like a lighter pink one that i like to lay with other things kind of this cooler toned soft baby pink it's quite milky and then this one is the blueberry chip which has more of like a dusty kind of ruddiness to it, but both I feel like are very pretty, both are quite flattering, um, and I wanna use both of these more, um, although I do already use them quite a bit. I do tend to wear cream cheeks um, day to day when I'm doing like more natural, fresh makeup, but when I am like going out and doing like a look, I use these a lot and I also use them on my eyes as well. They're so, so pretty. This from Can Make is one that I didn't reach for a bunch, but then recently I applied some blush colors and I can't remember which one it was, but I made it too like warm for the look I was doing. It was like too peachy and it just looked like wrong. And I actually put a bit of this on over the top and it like fixed it. So it was almost like a corrector because it's this sort of like cool toned purpley kind of color. Um, and I always like don't gravitate towards wearing this on its own, but when I have done it and like done like a really light layer, it's actually really pretty. So I feel like I shouldn't be as kind of cautious around this like purpley color as I am. I'm gonna keep this. And since I recently had that experience, I'm like, ah, I need to play with this more. So keeping this. This chunky boy could arguably be called a like highlighter, but it but it is more of a blush to me. This is the Bobbi Brown Shimmer Break in Rose. And it basically imparts this very pretty like pink, shimmery sheeny blush kind of color like a, a rosy color um it's very nice i don't use it all the time but i do like it whenever i use it i don't like how bulky it is it's like so big again with this kind of you know really huge value products like bobby brown they always have like really um big amounts of product which is good because i feel like the bobby brown customer is more of that like you know, I use the same thing every day kind of customer compared to me. Um, I've been working on this for years now. <laughs> um, it's very pretty and I did get gifted it. And Bobbi Brown was kind of one of the first brands to be um, very sweet and generous to me with PR gifting, which at the time I was like a very small rat Instagram girl. Um, so, I, you know, there's a slight tiny sentimental element there. Um, and it is a nice product. But I do think I will hold on to this because it's really like... I don't know if you can see. You can't really see it, but it's like a really soft sheen. It's not like super, mm. I don't know if you can see that. It's very subtle. It's almost like a soft sheen that I would use like as a blush topper. And that's actually really how I use it a lot of the time is I'll pop it over the top and it gives this really gorgeous, like soft, dusty, and it's quite like a multi-dimensional 
just like softly metallic glow. It's not really picking up on camera, but it is really quite pretty. Um, so I am going to hold on to that. And while we're talking about shimmery soft pinks, I'm going to talk about this from Cute Press, which is, I believe, a Thai company. I'm not totally sure, but I did buy this in Thailand. Um, this is their Glow Fit Blush. Um, it's this kind of like mottled, almost like terrazzo kind of texture. But when you pick it up on your finger, it's this like shimmery kind of pink. And I'll swatch this on my arm. You can kind of see. Maybe. It's a very like pink, metallic-y, but pretty moderately pigmented blush, um, which is also really pretty. As you can see, this is like my issue with blushes. I'm like, but they're different. The Bobbi Brown one is more of like a soft, dusty topper. And this one is much more of like your kind of candy pink, <sighs> which is quite pretty. I don't really have anything else like it. So I'm going to hold on to that one as well. I think I was like kind of going into this being like, maybe I'll get rid of this one. Um, I think it's quite similar to the Bobbi Brown one, but it isn't. It's really different. Maybe I'll have some better luck here, Gromit. Um, this from Hourglass is the Mood Exposure Blush. Um, and this one is kind of one of my like nudie movey kind of moments. Again, like I've used this a lot, I feel like, but it just doesn't really look that way. But I think it was more domed in the past. This is like kind of tonally similar to the Bobbi Brown one um, in that it's like a dusty movey nude. And I'll just swatch it there for you so you can see. It's a lot more um, like dusty movey, but it's also not super warm. It's a little warmer than this like candy pink, um, obviously. But I would say it's not like peachy and on the skin it does kind of come off as like a very like ugh, like your blush but better. It's very much like that kind of natural ruddiness you get. And I love the formula. Again, Hourglass powder products are really amazing. So I'm going to keep that as well. <laughs> I feel like since I did my last declutter and then I did like another declutter off camera, I haven't really, you know, uh, gotten rid of the favorites like they're the same favorites that have been there <laughs> um, Since last time and then another one. I'm gonna keep around although it is broken. This is the NARS blush in <clears throat> Deep Throat um, <laughs> Which is like a peachier kind of version to their most popular blush shade, which I'm sure a lot of you are aware of So that's more of that peachy shade. This is more of that neutral shade candy pink You know what I mean again that they're all quite different to me um, and work for different looks. It's a very pretty formula. I remember I'd always see like beauty gurus or like magazines and stuff being like, the NARS blush, and I'd be like, yeah, yeah. And then I tried it and I was like, ah, it is pretty good. It wears really well as well. Like some blushes I feel like just disappear really quickly, but this one wears really nicely. So if I like found a shade of this formula that I liked like more, I would be tempted to swap it. But I do think this shade is still quite pretty. And I remember when I had this applied to me the first time before I even worked at a place that stocked it, um, the girl who applied it on me was saying that this is like a nicer color that's like better suited to me than the most popular one because orgasm is more like warm, peachy, golden. And this is more of that like neutral kind of tone. I think it's still on the warmer side, but it's more of that like coral that has like the cool tone elements in it that doesn't look like just straight up orange on my skin. It is making me, however, reconsider that like middle shade um, from Hourglass. Like, I guess maybe because it's just looking a little more dull and orangey on here, but it's looking, it's looking like a lot more brown and muted than I thought it was. I thought it was a little bit more mauve -y. Um, but I don't know if it's just contextually with that one, but I'll swatch some other ones as well and see if I can maybe, you know, narrow down on the lineup a bit. So another shade, um, that I'm keeping is this one from Numbing. I know it says naming, but I'm pretty sure it's Numbing. It's like the cosmetics line from Nunning 9, the Korean fashion brand. But this kind of like super milky pastel color is just really different, um, than other stuff I have. I haven't had it for too long and I'm just really keen to like play with it and test it with other blushes. Just super duper milky, a bit peachy, um, but I don't know, I'm just keen to see if I like it or not. It does seem a little on the warmer side, but like swatched, it's quite interesting. So we'll see. This might be one of those ones where like I keep it for now, but you will not see it in uh, a future makeup declutter. A little more playtime required for this one. I don't know if you can see very well, but I've just built up like a few layers of it. And while it looks quite like peachy and apricotty in the pan, Built up, it takes on this kind of like dusty, like pinky mauve kind of quality. I know it's like super faint. Um, it's nowhere near as saturated as the other blushes on here, but it is like, 
interesting to me. This one from Clinique, these formulas are so pretty. I feel like they were really, really popular in Korea, actually. I've seen a lot of like KB bloggers talk about these, whereas I feel like in the Western beauty community, I feel like we talked about these like a little bit, but I don't think they were quite considered to be like super popular. Anyway, regardless, this is the Clinique Cheek Pop in the shade 1 Ginger Pop. Um, and I swatched it here on my arm for you. And as you can see, it is very vibrant and very orangey. <laughs> Quite different to the rest of the colors here, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but I don't really reach for it. And I think it's because, again, it was the kind of thing where I'm like, this is a pretty color. It is pretty. When I put the blush on, it looks pretty. But then sometimes it looks wrong. Uh, and everything looks wrong after that. And I don't know why. And I think it's because it's just like this quite vibrant tangerine shade that's just a little too warm for me. They have other really gorgeous color ranges in this formula and I would recommend this formula. Nothing personal against this blush in particular, but um, I think I much prefer using some of the other blushes I have uh, as opposed to this one. As pretty as it is, it's just a little too bright, a little too saturated, uh, and I have some other options I would rather use and I'm more interested in using. We are down to our final trio. Um, first up, this one from Peri Pera, which uh, again is an example of a product where I've got it and I haven't really used it much and I just need to test it more. It's kind of a recent-ish acquisition. And I've just swatched it there alongside the Clinique one we just looked at. Um, and it's just a more muted version of the same kind of shade. It's this kind of like corally peachy shade. And I'm not 100% sold on it. It's looking quite similar to the NARS one as well, but just more of like a muted one. I'm just gonna compare it to this shade from 3C, which I also have. I don't know if you can really see the difference here, but here we have the Peri Peri blush I swatched, then a 3C shade, and then another 3C shade, which I'm about to hit pan on, and they're all quite similar. These two 3C blushes, this one I got um, a while ago and I've nearly hit pan on, but this one is more new to me and it's a little bit brighter and a little bit more kind of peachy pink. But to be honest, they all look really similar and I'm not surprised that like on the cheeks, they all perform similarly. They're all sort of slightly more muted versions of like this one. It's really interesting because this one here at the end was one of my favorite blushes for the longest time. It's 3C's Mono Pink. Um, it's such a pretty formula, but looking at it, I actually like this color the least out of the three because um, it's more in that like orangey kind of end. I actually don't really like it. And I use this one so much and it's definitely like a pretty shade, but it does make sense to me that um, I kind of stop reaching for it in preference of like the more cool toned um, cream liquid and powder blushes that I have because it's actually just not really an amazing shade on me. Like I'm being a little melodramatic, like it looks fine, but <laughs> even just like on the arm kind of swatches, like these kind of colors up here, I feel like are a lot prettier and more like harmonious with my skin than these quite like orangey sort of colors down this end. It's hard to kind of show the nuances of the colors um, on camera. <laughs> I'm not really like an adept filming pro, but I actually think the Peri Peri one has like the prettiest tones that I want to use going forward. Um, and these two from Style Nanda, I'm actually like not into. I really like the cream blush I have. And in general, I love Style Nanda's formulas, but I find with their powders, they lean so warm. Like I've had eyeshadows from Style Nanda that are meant to be like cool toned and they're straight up like orangey kind of yellowy. Um, I really, really like the brand, but yeah, in terms of color selection, I find that I always struggle a little bit. Their colors just lean really um, warm in general. Starlander is almost like one of those brands where I feel like I need to see it in real life because I've just had quite a few experiences of just the color not being quite right. So both these blushes, as much as I like love them and I love the kind of packaging they're in and stuff, um, I can pass these on to a friend. This one is like pretty much hit pan. <laughs> so may maybe not this one, um, but this one I haven't used a bunch at all. It's pretty fresh and they are powder products. So um, yeah, I'm gonna declutter this and pass this one on. And then I'm gonna play with this um, little Peri Peri blush a little bit more. Um, because looking at the three, this one has like more interesting like muted neutral kind of tone to it whereas the other two are quite peachy um i kind of like got my fingers and like diffused the blushes out to kind of see how they look more diffused and they both look just warm <laughs> Because sometimes in the pen or even like swatched with like your finger, you can't really tell like the actual true 
um, kind of undertonal way that a color is going to blend out. But this one blends out really prettily, which uh, reminds me of probably why I got it in the first place. So I'll hold on to this one and uh, say goodbye to those 3C ones, which is so sad because I actually like love that formula, but, but I haven't really been reaching for them as much since I've become more aware of like just colors and how they work with, you know, my skin and me uh, <laughs> in general. And you know, blush is definitely a category which I enjoy uh, trying new things. So I would like to make room for some more like cool tone blushes. Cause even, you know, the blushes I do have is still quite like neutral, um, a little more on that like peachy corally side of things. I'd love to see some soft pinks. So again, uh, not incredibly satisfying. I mean, to be honest, there was gonna be a moment where I really only decluttered like one uh, of my powder blushes. So, you know, that's at least uh, an improvement on that. And I feel like blush is one of those things, especially when doing you know, your base and doing complexion makeup where it really does change the look or, you know, for whatever look you have in mind, um, having a appropriate blush that kind of suits the look is uh, kind of like, I won't go so dramatic as to say make or break, but there have definitely been times where I've done a look and then I've put like the wrong blush on and I've been like, gosh darn it, and had to like blend it away and like kind of change the blush color as a result. So for a category that I feel quite passionate about and I really enjoy, I don't, I don't think that's too bad. And it was interesting to do some kind of swatching along here because kind of seeing these like tones up here, I'm like, oh, those are quite pretty. And like the more like kind of corally orangey ones where I'm like, hmm, I don't really know if I need all of those. <laughs> um, definitely interesting. Alrighty, highlighters. <laughs> I feel pretty confident, unlike the blush category where I was like, oh, what's gonna happen? Like this one, I'm like, I know what's happening. I know it's going down. I'm already looking and I'm sorting within my brain. Uh, and, and now I'm going to do it now in front of you. <laughs> I'm going to start with this one because it's a new acquisition. So with this one, I actually went to an event and it was included in a gift bag, which is very nice. Um, so I tried it. It's a very pretty color. I believe it's called Pink Diamond. And, it, and it's this kind of like champagne-y, like pink kind of... It really doesn't look like what it is in the tube. It's like a soft pink champagne, but it has like these kind of gold flecks of glitter in it. I think as pretty as this is, the kind of color of that gold glitter does not look great on me um, and just sort of looked a little bit textured. Uh, as you can see, it looks really, really pretty, but just as it wore on me and just in terms of the color on my skin of my face, <laughs> Not so amazing. Um, I've only used this like twice, so I will definitely uh, pass this on to um, a family member or a friend because it is very pretty, obviously very nice. Um, I really want to try their blush sticks from Anastasia, but uh, yeah, this one's just not my preference. This poor battered soul from ColourPop is their Super Shock highlighter in the shade Flexitarian. I use this all the time. It is like the prettiest, uh, like white champagne-y kind of glowy highlighter that's not like ovary like glittery it just has a really nice shimmery sheen that's quite pearly um yeah i really really like this i would even be so tempted as to repurchase this i just really enjoyed it, it works really well for me um great price point uh it's definitely um on its last legs there's a couple of products that you've seen are uh, in a similar state um but it's so so good so i'm definitely keeping it so similar to one of the cream blushes we looked at, this is from uh, a Pew. This is their Juicy Pang highlighter. Again, it's hard to capture on camera, but it has this almost red glittery iridescent reflect, which is incredibly pretty. However, um, I don't love the way it looks on me and the formula isn't my favorite because it's like a highlighter, but the reflect is like darker than my skin tone. It looks a little weird. Like I do really need it to be quite pastel-y. So this one is gonna be moving on. Then I have these two, both of which are your more kind of pinky toned highlighters. To be honest, they're quite similar in terms of how they look on the skin. Um, this one's like a little bit more metallic, whereas this one almost has this kind of soft ethereal glow. And I think I like this one better. So I'm gonna keep this Remand one, which is from their Hanbok collection. Very pretty kind of like, silvery pinky color. And I'm gonna declutter this one from Models Own. Um, it's quite a nice formula and a really great budget buy, um, but I just don't really feel the need to have both of them. Then I have this one, which is a little bit of a splurge that I did like last year, maybe like a year and a half ago. It's this Dior like highlighter blush palette. I love it. This formula is stunning, especially this like white um, in the top left is like this pearly moonlight glow. The pink is like a gorgeous blush. Um, 
Even the champagne-y kind of color is really pretty. I don't, I can't say I reach for the bronze as much as the other three, um, but it's good as well. Um, I, I really love this. I think it's a really great formula. Um, and I think it was, you know, worth the, worth the little splurge perhaps. Then I have this from Fenty Beauty. This actually was one that Alex gave to me. I think she already had one and she just bought another one in this like limited edition packaging. And she had like a box of stuff um, that me and a bunch of her friends, we were all at her place and she told us to look through. Um, and this was like the one thing that I was kind of after because I actually had this Fenty Beauty highlighter on my wish list. Unfortunately, the product had actually fallen <laughs> out of the pan. Um, it was like fully new. It's just like the cream had like kind of shrunk a little bit, I think, and fallen out of the pan, but I have pressed it back in and it is gorgeous. I love adding this on top of my other highlighters or even on my eyelids for like a shimmery, glossy glow. I think it's very pretty. Um, yeah, and I, I like that it's in the pink packaging. It's very cute. Now I feel like we're kind of firmly in our classic vanilla champagne beige <laughs> highlighter territory. Um, I am going to hold on to this one from Clio. It's their Prism highlighter. I think this is from, I think this is from last, hello. Good to see you. I think this is from last year's Yes Style Advent Calendar. Correct me if I'm wrong. This is great. I've been using it quite a bit. Um, you can kind of see the brush marks. <laughs> There's like a more low key formula and then like a more kind of high impact glittery formula. And both of them are very pretty and I feel like suit me quite well. They're very glam, they're very fun. Uh, I like it a lot. It's a really great budget formula. And I've heard really good things about the other like single clear highlighters and stuff as well. And their blushes, like the Prism line or even just in general, the clear powder formula. I don't know. It does make me intrigued to try out some of their other like powdery complexion products from Clio because uh, this one kind of slays. There's you. There's me. Hello. This one from Too Faced is their Love Light Highlighter. I actually think these are discontinued now. I just don't reach for this compared to my other highlighters of similar shades. Like it just doesn't perform as nicely. Um, if I want something softer, I'll go for the MAC one, which I'll show you in a second. If I want something more high impact, I'll go for the Zen one or the Prism one from Clio. Like, it doesn't really have a place in my collection, um, but you know, the Sailor Mooniness of it all and how pretty it is does make me want to hold on to it. But funnily enough, I was just looking up to see if they even still make these anymore and they've been discontinued. <laughs> and I saw like a Temptalia review of this formula and I was like, oh yeah, like Temptalia. Like I really trust her reviews. Um, if, you're, if you've been into makeup for a long time, Temptalia's like blog is like, just so useful. Um, and she fully rated this like a D minus, <laughs> which um, yeah, isn't great. Uh, not a lot of highlighters. It's pretty, pretty poor review, um, which I thought was funny. Um, I was planning on, you know, decluttering this anyway, um, but uh, yeah, you know, trusted sources also think the formula isn't very good. Um, I think it's fine, um, but it is not as good as some other ones that I have, so. <laughs> Yeah, I will be passing this guy along. Bom, 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 bom. This tiny guy is so fun. This is from Zen. It is a little highlighter and it is the most kind of blinding, high impact, champagne-y metallic highlighter. Um, it's very pretty and completely <laughs> obliterates the need for uh, like the Too Faced one I just showed you because it's just so much better. And I love how compact it is. It was also very affordable if I remember correctly as well. I think Zen is either a Thai brand or a Hong Kong based makeup brand. Um, but irregardless, uh, I'll be keeping this one in my collection because it's um, very good. You only need like a tiny little bit to kind of give a really pretty champagne glow. And then my old school bestie, uh, I love the MAC Mineralize Skin Finish Formula. It's so pretty, the like baked kind of vibe, but, but this is Light Skipade. It's so pretty. I have used this so much um, and it really doesn't look that way, but I do think the powder was domed at a point and it's looking, looking pretty well near flat by now. Um, but this is like so pretty, like a kind of vanilla dusting on your cheeks. If you just want like a soft, like natural, like, elf lady kind of glow, kind of like the hourglass formula that I showed you before, but just like, but just more of that like pearly kind of vibe as opposed to like a diamond sparkle from some of those highlighters. Like I feel like when you wear this, it's not as apparent that you're like wearing a highlighter. You know what I mean? Like those metallic-y sort of highlights can definitely be like, oh, that's highlighter. Whereas this kind of just is more of a like natural glow. I would still recommend this today. I think this is like such a nice product. I think the elf, 
uh, like moonlight something thing is quite similar to this as well but this one has this like kind of cool tone vanillary beige it almost looks like a little bit gray um but for my cool tone girlies this doesn't have that like champagne-y like yellowiness to it it's very much like a vanilla cool toned kind of sheen i really really like this and i'll be holding on to it so here we are we have these ones over here which are our um, beloved who will be remaining with us all different kinds of glow from like a really soft pearly vibe to like more of your diamond glittery vibe and we have these four here who are, are no longer in the tribe leaving the island not moving on to become america's next top model yada yada um most of these are fine <laughs> but they're just like not as good as the other ones i feel like you could say that about all of this but it's not so much like color um you know which i feel like was the blush kind of thing like tones and shades so much as like formula with these ones these ones are just like they're just better, unfortunately. <laughs> For me, anyway. I, you know, if any of these are your favorite, please no hate. But like to me, <laughs> the lady who uses them on their face, um, these ones are more better. <laughs> Alrighty, I think I'm gonna leave it there for today. Um, I don't know if I will separate this into multiple videos or if this will just be the same video you will be able to see by the time code. I'm starting to lose the sunlight. There's over five hours of footage. So I think we'll be having at least a at least a part two. <laughs> but with that, we're actually done with the complexion draw, one draw down. I think the eye draw will be easier. Um, and then the lip draw, I don't know how much I'm gonna declutter because I love lip products. But we shall see how we go. We are halting here for the moment and we will pick this up. And another big thank you to today's sponsor, Anna Louisa. The information about them and all of their beautiful earrings and jewelry in general is in the description box below. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.